Brian Adrian back with you for another video. So these units, these two units from here to here, completely wrapped up now. And uh, the rest of the block is my videos for a while now I know that I did very similar units of these townhouses in the summer and uh, so I kind of had a good idea of what I was getting into so, um, I guess we'll start here so uh, in the past, I've had a few questions asking me why I strap the, uh, the jacks on side to side. So it's for the, uh, the aluminum guys to run their J-bolt. They can only go side to side. I left the way for the brick there, leave it only 5 inches. And uh, instead of going 2 feet, it was less than that, so I just centered it. So pretty standard stuff here, 3 2 by 6 posts. Walking in. Guys, for any uh, headers that you think there, for any windows where you think there might be a change, don't be afraid to run the header long to the next stud bay. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, some of these houses, all these houses are sold, and sometimes there's changes, especially in the bathroom. And I was told that there might be a change here, so just to cover myself. I ran it long and uh, if you're working for a builder that or you're doing a custom job where there's a lot of changes involved it's never a bad idea to run the header long it's a lot less work than having to potentially take that header out and uh, it's a lot easier to move a couple jacks than a whole uh, window system so here we are here, nine foot ceilings. Um, this of course is a walkout basement. So there's my fire rate wall. And uh, there's your other layer. Yeah. I, bu I bumped into where the fascia meet and I went two feet. You know where? From the inside? Yeah, from the bottom of the fascia where it meets the fascia and then two feet. Okay, used to uh, used to work for me. Almost 13 years. Um, okay, moving on. So we strap these walls here, two by two, where, uh, where there's going to be no plumbing. And here's a little tip, guys. So. If the block layer does a job right, instead of marking out every uh, every 69 center, and it kind of adds up if you're doing a bunch of units, just check the mortar line, and every other one in a perfect world should line up. So you would put your first nail there, eye it right down to the bottom, there. Next one. Each block is 16 inch in center, and uh, so are your 2x2 two two strapping. So we actually nailed these with the strip nailer. And uh, they're just uh, 2 and 3 8 hardened smooth nails. I, uh, I, actually, I actually prefer nailing the strapping with the strip nailer because. Uh, when I've done in the past with the coil nailer, the concrete, because of the, the pressure, the piston or driver, some people call it, actually snaps a lot of the time. So, so I have a dedicated nailer that just does that. And uh, it's served me well over the years. 
That's all I use it for. It's a Passload PF350, I believe, the Power Master. That puts them in nice and deep. Another tip when you're putting these nails, make sure you put them straight in. If you're on any type of an angle, they won't grab. And uh, let's just say they're not the cheapest nails. So, kind of important that we do things right. Here's a high wall 2x8, 12 inch from center to center. And that goes all the way to the top. But it, and then there's a glue lamb, and then I have a 2x6 wall on top of this high wall that's strapped out to match this wall. Let's see what I'm talking about in a second. Going upstairs. Now, if you just look between the floor, you kind of see that everything lines up. Whether it's the point loads, um, the studs, the studs, it's a very important inline framing. That includes inside walls. A lot of guys, they don't, um, they go inline framing for just the exterior and then they just pull 16s from wherever they are for the interior. But uh, there are a few friends that are plumbers and they say they, they hate going in houses where there's not inline framing because they just, uh, they go through a lot of drill bits and a lot of frustration and headaches. So if you wanna sort of maintain a good reputation, inline framing is the way to go. So this wall, because of the plumbing, we brought it out uh, four inches. I give it the extra half inch because sometimes the block wall is not perfect and that gives them half inch room to play. So 42 inch high knee wall, sunken in the floor on the, out, like, on the outside and locked in. So when I take off this brace or whoever does, this is nice and stiff. Now, there's going to be a, a glass mount right here. This is going to be glass. And it will be a curb here. And then, uh, you know what? Probably should have put a full stud here with a 14 and a half block behind it. And uh, not a big deal. I can do that. So, above, you can see the glue lambs for the loft and the roof. So those lag bolts are eight inch on center. I think uh, a couple videos back, I filmed a video about actually drilling these on the ground. And uh, let's just say it didn't go the smoothest until I bought a proper tool. Guys, it's amazing how much a good tool can just help the job go way smoother and actually make it enjoyable. Good tools make, will make you money. Bad tools will just... You think you're well going ahead with uh, disposable tools, but really you just, in the end, long run, you're just wasting your time, your energy, and, uh, and your time. And guys, time is money, so. Cathedral. I like to put uh, 22 and 3 8 on both sides of the angle. I do that now because the inspector doesn't want the insulation guy to be cutting the poly. So they'll just seal that poly, give it a bead, and seal it and keep going so they won't cut it. So there's no tape involved. So it's kind of the new code around here. So put this. Uh, wall insulation wall two feet center some guys go 16 nothing wrong with that and then I go just plywood scraps whatever I can find go behind there now it's important to run your plywood at least 18 inches from the underside of the angle for all points because they go in 18 inches that's the magic number. So. Moving 
on going into the loft once again inline framing so this is the wall i was just talking about that got strapped out and once what i'm standing on gets taken away this will all be open to below this is just a temporary floor covering There's my knee wall. In this uh, in this loft section, there's a couple of different wall heights, and uh, you can always find those on your roof sketch, <coughs> your roof layout, sorry. And uh, guys, when you start a job, any job, don't be afraid to ask for the roof layout. Chances are they do have it, and uh, you can avoid a lot of problems and uh, get ahead of the game, be proactive, and uh, fix problems before they start by getting things like the wall heights right. So those wall heights are all found on the roof layout. This, as you can probably tell, will all be stucco. So at the end of it, it'll be a total of 10 inches. 10 inches wide on both sides. So even though, as you can see, this is covered, they still want um, a slope. Even if it's a slightly gentle slope, and we'll put decking on top of this. Well, first they'll seal this in and then eventually they'll put decking side to side. And uh, so basically any water that will get in here will be diverted away from the house. So guys, when you're doing, when you're cutting your, uh, your slope for your, for your scupper, just remember away from the house and directed at the, uh, the scupper itself. So it's not, it's not enough just to go one way. It has to be, um, away from the house and away this way. So the two angles kind of blend into one. So that's that. Counter strip, very easy to do guys. Just uh, all you really need is a speed score and a skill saw. And just remember when you're measuring to measure to the long point and then do on, do the your speed score on the back side and then that way it'll sit nicely on the square ends you don't have to bevel every corner usually you run one straight and that's the same measurement there and then the longer side doesn't actually matter which side you make straight that's the side you put the angles on and always guys seven by seven and then uh, this rim board is flush with the brick so from this rim board up it's stucco roof roof um, we built this out a bit for the uh to give extra room for stucco and uh yeah. It's funny, the uh, the boss of this this crew here, he was saying to me a couple weeks ago that he's gonna he's gonna pass me, he's gonna beat me. He started at the same time as me. And uh, I'm not really a betting man, but I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Looks like they have another three weeks on there. I don't know if he was joking or not, but Anyway, so, um, guys, a couple of you guys were asking me about plumbing. How do I locate the plumbing? So I brought the plans with me here. I'm gonna do my best. These are the actual blueprints for the house. I'm gonna try to find a situation that I can show you with the, uh, as it, as it relates to plumbing. So, 
Let's take here, for example. Okay. Okay, let's go back up here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you on the loft floor. Basically, when you're looking at, you just hear that wind roar. So right there, right? Now you would be, now the joists here go side to side. So in this case, I would go from this wall, which is this wall right here, I would go 13 inches from the inside of the two by six, and that would be the center of the drain, right? And then for right here, the 30, 32 shower, um, I would do 16 from the inside of this wall here. So, that's how you find it. If, if you run into a situation where you have a wall here and joists going this way, you would account for 16 from the inside of the wall to the center of the toilet. I'm trying to find a situation like that. So let's say here, for example, right? Here's your your shower. You would go 16 from the center, right? And then from that same inside wall. You already go 48 to this center. Because 32 plus 16, so 16 and 48 are going to be the center of your dreams in this section. Now, the trend here that I've noticed is a lot of builders are putting bathrooms, um, tubs on their first floor. But uh, not this, not this particular house, but. I've noticed a trend with, I think a lot of it is to do with in-laws moving back in with them and they don't want the, uh, the ordeal of the stairs. So bigger houses with tubs on the first floor. So, so let's stay here. When, when we're talking about plumbing, so the joists here go side to side. I would account for 13 from the back. If they're going front to back, I would account for 16 from this side of the inside wall to the center of the drain. So basically, just think about leg room, right? If you're sitting on the toilet, you want more leg room. So 13 from the back, more leg room from the side, 16, right? So every builder that I've ever worked for, that applies, at least in Ontario. So guys, I don't know what more I can show you on this unit and go quickly next door I'm gonna check out that unit real quick just waiting on the steel post for here wherever uh, the code here what they want is uh, wherever there's a load even if it's on the the firewall Comfort wall, they will want two by eight top gun every two feet. So, two top guns every two feet. So, that adds a little bit of work, but nothing, nothing too scary. So, there you see it again. So, it looks fairly similar. This unit, um, once again, we have the loft going upstairs. This is just a temporary floor covering.
there you have it. Here's our opening to the roof. We're kind of fortunate on these houses because the uh, all the truss hangers were the smaller style, not the uh, LUS 24s, I believe they are called. So, just they're nailed with all of those three and a half inch uh, 16. 16 D nails. It's a lot of uh, a lot of stress on the compressor and the palm nailer, and it's just a tedious job that nobody really wants to do. So you can see here, we left this uh, this first row. We left that back a little bit, and that is because of the stucco itself is wider and. Uh, Check out that huge overhang. Now, I'm still in question whether they want some type of skirt here. Nothing showed on either of the plans. I'm trying to find So this wall here actually has three layers um, of sheeting. I guess if you could add, if you could consider Tyvek as a sheeting. It's uh, got one layer of thermoply, and then uh, we put a full roll of Tyvek. And then on top of that is where the exposed roof is. It's stucco. So. Anyways, guys. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're staying dry, staying out of the wind as best you can if you are working in this weather. Be safe and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Bye for now guys. Remember to like and subscribe.